Hello, my name is Greg Williams, and I'm a product manager here at Meraki. This video is to provide an overview of how simple it is to set up our new Meraki Teleworker VPN. We're going to use a typical company, Acme Enterprise, for our demo today. Acme has a typically overworked IT manager, we'll call him John. John has been asked by his VP to get him remote LAN access from his house. His VP often works from home and needs to be able to access various file servers and in-house applications from home. John has considered purchasing a VPN solution where he'd need to install a VPN concentrator appliance and install client software on any user's laptops. But it is quite expensive and he's had many issues with client-side VPN solutions before where clients couldn't connect consistently at a previous job. So he's looking for a better, easier solution. He already has a Meraki wireless network installed at their headquarters building. Today, he's going to set up a VPN connection for his VP to a remote access point at the gentleman's home. Here we see Acme's existing wireless network and dashboard. They've got five access points at their headquarters. The first thing we need to do is create a concentrator network. One of the unique advantages of the Meraki VPN solution is that rather than requiring the purchase and installation of a separate hardware VPN appliance, a virtual cloud-managed concentrator is used at headquarters to terminate the VPN tunnels from the access points. The concentrator sits in its own network and dashboard, and you can even download the virtual machine image directly from dashboard and then run it on an existing commodity server that you already have in your network. So let's get started here. So the first thing we need to do is create a new VPN concentrator, which you'll see I'm going to select from the network selector at the top of the page. And so it's asking me to name my virtual machine. So we're going to call this the HQ concentrator. And we'll just go ahead and click create VPN concentrator. <clears throat> and here we have it. It says successfully added VPN concentrator. You can see the MAC address that is assigned, serial number, the model, it's a VM concentrator. So <clears throat> we'll see this link here under status where it says virtual machine download image. So I'm going to go ahead and click here and it will go ahead and download the image to, uh, to my desktop. I'm using Chrome so you can see the update status down here at the bottom. So it's downloading a zip file which contains the virtual machine that I'll need for the concentrator. <clears throat> so now that it's downloaded, I'm going to go ahead and drag this to my desktop. I'm going to move my dashboard browser. Here is the VPN concentrator. I'm going to go ahead and unzip that. Trash the zip file. Now, John would actually be running this probably in VMware Workstation uh, on a server that he already has at work, but for the purposes of keeping the demo simple, uh, I'm going to run it in VMware Fusion on my Mac laptop here. So I already have VMware Fusion open, and I'm going to go ahead and click on Open an Existing Virtual Machine. There's my concentrator folder. I'm going to select the Meraki Virtual Machine and hit Open. <clears throat> And now it's going to load into VMware. So we'll give this just a minute to finish loading. So now the virtual appliance has loaded up and it's in the process of connecting to the Meraki cloud controller. So you can see the status there connecting to cloud. <clears throat> so once it, has, once it changes to connected to cloud, then we'll know that, there we go. It's connected to the cloud controller. It has been assigned an IP address. So our concentrator is now up and running. That's it. It's uh, extremely easy and straightforward. So the next step here, now that our concentrator is up and running, is we're going to go ahead <clears throat> and create a new network, a remote network, for the VP's wireless network at home. So I'm going to say create a new network. I'm going to call this VP home. <clears throat> we're
we're going to add a single MR12 single radio 11 and access point. Excuse me. I'm just going to enter the serial number here. <clears throat> and I'm going to go ahead and copy the settings for this network from the Acme Enterprise corporate network. We're using 802.1x at Acme Enterprise, and we want to copy over all those configuration settings to this new network so that the experience of the VP at home is basically the same as though they were at headquarters. I'm going to go ahead and hit Create Network. <clears throat> also going to close this toolbar down at the bottom, since we don't need that anymore. So we have successfully added our access point now. Uh, it's telling me that I need to add a license, which is absolutely correct. I have my license standing by. So I'm going to go to License Info. I'm going to increase my device limit. And I'm going to enter my license key. I would get this license key from an email that I would receive from shipping at meraki.com once I purchased the license. I'm going to go ahead and hit add. You can see that now the warning has disappeared as I now have current device limit seven and devices in the network is also seven. So our network is basically set up here. We can go to <clears throat> configure and you'll see that we have our two SSIDs that were copied over from the corporate network, corporate and guest. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the corporate network. <clears throat> so as mentioned, we're using WPA2 Enterprise with 802.1x authentication. The radio server information has already been copied over. And under VPN here, we will change this to select the concentrator in our network. And we will go ahead and hit Save Changes. <clears throat> And so now that I have selected the concentrator, uh, traffic from this SSID uh, will be tunneled back to the concentrator. So it's that easy. It's done on a per SSID basis. Uh, so now I have my corporate network for the VPDUs to access corporate resources. Uh, and then I also have a uh, guest network. This guest network is, it'll be for the family usage, uh, they will also want to be able to get onto the wireless network, get to the internet, etc. So we're going to go ahead and set this up with WPA2 pre-shared key. And I'm going to just set it up with a temporary password, which he can change as soon as he tells me uh, what he wants to use as a password. We'll use NAT mode for this. We're going to prevent wireless clients from accessing our LAN, block adult content. Excuse me, I need to have two more characters. There we go. So now our guest network is also configured. So basically the remote network is all set up and ready to go. We've added the access point in the license. The only thing I need to do now is hand the MR12 access point to the VP and tell him to take it home and just plug it into his internet connection. Uh, once the access point uh, connects to the internet and the cloud controller, it'll automatically download its own configuration uh, and uh, that SSID will be configured as a, uh, a VPN tunneled uh, remote access point SSID. So there's no individual configuration of the access point. I don't even need to get it out of the box. It can just be sent directly to the VP. Now in the future, uh, perhaps the VP decides that he wants to have uh, an IP phone connected to the company's PBX server at headquarters. Uh, he can easily do that. Uh, there's a second point of the MR12 that can be used. You can actually VPN tunnel traffic from wired clients as well. So what I would basically want to do is I would want to create a third SSID. I'm going to call this VoIP. I can complete the configuration of this later on, but uh, so on this VoIP SSID, I'm going to go to VoIP, and I would also be tunneling traffic. Uh, 
And then, under the network-wide settings page, what I'll want to do is basically associate that port with a particular SSID. So you go down to device configuration, you'll see clients wired directly to Meraki APs, and I will say behave like they're connected to VoIP. And so what that will do is any client, including a short telephone perhaps, that connects to that second port will behave exactly like they were wirelessly connected to the VoIP SSID, and that SSID is being tunneled back to headquarters. And then I would just send the short telephone with, home with the, uh, the VP and we'd be all set. So that's it. We uh, had the, the VPN up and running in about five minutes and could easily add on the, the short telephone as well to the configuration. So it's that simple. Thank you for your time and uh, enjoy the new feature.